Welcome to the School of Architecture and EIT Faculty Workshop Group CNC Router Instructionals. The CNC router is used for simple cutting and shaping of materials. The CNC router has three axes of movement and can cut to a high degree of accuracy down to a 0.1mm tolerance. A wide range of materials can be used, however the focus is mainly on wood products being both solid woods and board products such as plywood. Boards and plywood from 4mm thickness upwards can be cut on the CNC router with thinner material better suited to the laser cutter. The router can also cut plastic and non-ferrous metals such as aluminium plate. It can cut and mill all types of polystyrene and other plastics that cannot be cut on the laser cutter. The versatility and industrial capacity of the CNC router are its strengths. However, there is a bit more setup and tooling knowledge required so there is a greater level of complexity using the machine compared, say, to the laser cutter. Before you complete your CNC router competency assessment, you will need to ris read the risk assessment on the UQ risk assessment database. In addition, you will be required to bring your own steel cap safety shoes for the induction and whenever you use the router. Safety glasses are mandatory in the workshop at all times and are available from the hopper at the entry to the workshop. Hearing protection is also required and available during cutting operations on the CNC router. The CNC in CNC router stands for Computer Numeric Control. This means most of the actions that the machine performs are programmed via toolpath software. So in most instances, the operator of the machine will be loading and unloading material and supervising the cut and making sure the job is running to plan. Here is a general view showing the main elements of the machine. We will go into detail further in this instructional. The main moving part is the gantry and spindle that moves automatically around the full extent of the bed as per the pre-programmed job. The main control pad and emergency stop are on the gantry. The pickup guards the moving spindle and attaches the dust extract system so that the dust is taken away at the source of the cut. On top of the main CNC table, we have a sacrificial sheet. This is needed to protect the CNC table from damage. There is a vacuum system that holds down the material that sucks through this sacrificial sheet. The origin of the CNC is at the closest left-hand corner when approaching the machine, just next to the tool tip-off sensor. Under the CNC table, we have a range of gauges showing the status of the air supply, two gated valves that control the vacuum to the CNC table, and the main on-off switch. The CNC router is fitted with a 10-tool automatic tool changer. This means for most jobs you can program a cutting routine with multiple tooling without having to manually change a tool. It is important to check the chart behind the CNC router to confirm what tools are loaded into the tool changer. You can bear this in mind while you are planning a job and sorting out your toolpath. The toolpath software will have the tools pre-programmed so you can select and use the tools in the changer. If you select a tool that is not in the tool changer it will either generate an error message during the machining or ask you to manually change the tool. Only workshop technicians are allowed to manually change tools during a job so therefore you must be certain to use only tools preloaded in the tool changer for your job. We will cover aspects of tooling later on. Jobs are called up and executed through the main control pad. You can move the gantry left to right and the spindle back and forth using the number pad marked with the directional arrows. The red buttons on the pad pause the job mid-routine. Some functions can be called through the control pad, for example, to put tools away, to tip off the tool lengths, and to manually turn on the dust extractor. Though there are quite a number of functions available, for most jobs the operator will only need to know how to start and stop a job, as the job routine will have been pre-programmed through the toolpath software. On a final note, pay attention to the location of the emergency stop button, which can be used to immediately disable the machine in case of a major problem or accident. The pickup is both a guard and an intake for the dust extraction. There are two different types of pickups we use, one for normal cutting and one for milling operations. It is important to use the one for normal cutting in most instances unless the workshop technicians advise you otherwise and have changed the pickup for you. The main thing to note is that the height of the pickup can be adjusted by moving the rub rubber grommets up and down on the pickup connecting lugs. Though the pickup can move semi-automatically, 
it is good to set the height of the pickup so that it glides just above the surface. If the pickup drags along the surface, it can get caught on the edges of shapes or fall into a cut that you have created on your job, and this can jam the machine and cause it to lose its origin. All jobs will be set to the origin point, which is at the corner of the sacrificial sheet closest to the tool tip-off sensor. When placing your material on the CNC table, you must align the material to the origin point. For normal operation of the machine, most operators do not need to know about tool tip-off. Whenever a router bit is changed, the workshop technicians will tip off the tool. If a job is not working as you thought it would, say it's not cutting through the material properly, and assuming the tool path is correct, one of the troubleshooting sequences is to re-tip off the tool. The workshop technicians can show you how to do this. Materials are held to the CNC table with a vacuum system. The vacuum is quite strong and will suck through the sacrificial sheet and hold your material firmly to the bed. It is important to recognise that the vacuum is good but is not bulletproof, especially when you're using thinner material around 4 to 7 millimetres thick. Thin plywood especially can be problematic as it is affected by moisture. It may be necessary to fix down the edges with nails or screws to seal as much of the edge to prevent vacuum leakage. Materials such as aluminium and plastics are not as porous as wood-based materials and will hold onto the CNC table firmly without the need for additional fastenings. When using smaller stock, you can shut down one half of the bed to prevent leakage and to maximise the vacuum to the first zone. The gate valve for the vacuum are under the table. If the valve is vertical, means the vacuum is on. The valve is horizontal, means the vacuum is off. Students are advised that the minimum material size for a safe cut is 1200 mm by 1200 millimetres. If you intend using smaller material sizes, please discuss it first with the workshop technicians. Finally, as part of your pre-operational check, make sure that the compressed air supply and vacuum pressure is on. The dials should be registering to the right as shown on the slide. If the air supply is not on or the dials are not registering pressure, do not run the job as tool changing and other functions will be affected and can damage the machine. Looking on the right hand side, underside of the CNC table, we can see the main compressed air supply connection. Operators are not to disconnect or interfere with the connections. If the air supply is not connected, please advise the workshop technicians. The second vacuum zone gate valve is shown. Finally, the main on-off switch of the CNC machine is on the far right underside the table. Workshop technicians will have the machine ready and warmed up for you prior to your booking. It may be necessary to restart the machine if there is a problem with the routine, especially when it seems that the origin has been lost. If you think that there is an issue that requires a restart, please see the workshop technicians for assistance. On the column next to the main switch, you will see the CNC Safe Operating Procedure, or SOP. There is also a compressed air supply line. Make sure that the supply air gate valve is shown in the down position. If the gate valve is closed, then there will be no air getting to the machine, which may be a reason why pressure gauges are reading abnormally. The main three-phase electricity supply and the data point for the machine are also located here. Under no circumstance are operators to touch the data or power supply feeds. Typically, access around the CNC machine is from the front or operator side only. Only workshop technicians are allowed to change and replace tools. Anyone working at the rear of the CNC machine needs to be mindful of the pinch point between the dust extraction post and the automatic tool changing carousel. There is also a second emergency stop on the gantry. Most operators will not need to access the plant room adjacent to the CNC machine. Workshop technicians should be the only personnel accessing this area. The plant room contains the compressor for the air supply, the air dryer, the CNC table vacuum and the dust extractor. One aspect of troubleshooting for an air supply issue may be that the compressor is not on or the supply has been inadvertently switched off. You can check the pressure gauge to ensure that the compressor is pressurised the dial should sit around 8. The gate valve should also be in a horizontal position for proper airflow. The air dryer is needed to remove water from the compressed air. Water in the compressed air can damage the bearings and other moving parts of the CNC machine. The illuminated green switch should be on and the indicator beside the switch should be registering green. Finally, the dust extraction should be monitored during multiple cuts. 
Once the glass indicator window is obscured by dust, as shown, then the bag should be changed. Workshop technical staff will usually attend to this. Finally, the filter cleaning ratchet should be turned to free up the filter cloth at the start and end of the day, and during the day if there is a lot of cutting. This now ends the general navigation around the CNC router. There are companion instructionals covering tooling, file setup, toolpath software, and running a job.